Hello. So I thought this would be a useful guide if you've ever wondered about things like the lost wax technique and casting, and also if you don't even have the money to go for full-blown casting techniques, this is a really cheap way to get a metal casting out of pewter using something very cheap, uh, which is a moldable glue called Sugru. And what I essentially ended up doing to get this little mold, as you can see here, was I took my minifig, I put Sugru around it, made a back and a front half, put them together, cast some wax, and then use that wax, lost wax technique, to get the metal mold. So obviously I'm going to go through this a little bit more slowly than that, but that's the basic full process all involved. So if you know what you're doing and you're uh, an experienced model maker and caster, the insight is really that Sugru is super cheap and you get a reasonably good metal mold that will be good for, say, about you know five repetitions. And if you're completely new to this, then this is a really good primer without you having to go completely into the full investment of buying all the usual molding gear and release agents and all that sort of stuff, which gets expensive. And this is certainly one of those things that's just nice if you wanted to make, I don't know, a little, a little pendant for a friend or whatever. So hope this is useful. Okay, so it's worth just saying, like, a bit of a disclosure, I used to work at Sugru, but this isn't in any way endorsed or affiliated with them. It was just quite simply I did this sort of stuff in my free time and really enjoyed it. Um, but again, do this very much at your own risk. It is with hot liquid metal, so make sure you're comfortable and uh, equipped to do this. So, bit of bit of all preamble on that sort of thing, just to run through some of the tools that I used. Obviously, as you can see, heavily advising using safety specs. Um, this is the stuff Sugru. Um, you can find it at sugru.com. Uh, it's available in uh, three packs, five packs, eight packs. Doesn't really matter on the color you use. Um, and essentially, I used uh, essentially little containers for melting the wax um, to basically make the lost wax relief. Um, things like a few different fine scalpels are very useful. Brushes and files for cleaning up and polishing. I just used a very, very simple, I don't know what you call it, it's almost like a little skillet that was for melting pewter that was recommended on the website that I got the pewter from. I think it was on Amazon. Um, and then, as always, you can imagine it's useful just to have a multi-tool or rotary tool to finish it. Now, you can actually use a gas hob, uh, but I realized that it's one of those annoying things if you spill wax or indeed metal uh, on your parents or your own hob, it's one of those things that, you know, it's, it's really annoying. So I actually just used a cheap camping gas uh, to get the temperature up to melt the pewter. So bearing in mind, pewter melts at a relatively low temperature, um, so it doesn't need to be crazy hot, the flame. Okay, so safety first, as always. If you can get a full face mask, that's great, but the minimum you should consider is at least a good, good pair of safety goggles. So all the links uh, of where you can buy stuff uh, in, in the guide, uh, link in, in the bottom. Um, so the way we created the two-part mold, as I mentioned, was to basically dip the minifig in a bit of water. Um, not something that I think I put in the guide, but it's kind of a little bit the truth that what's better than water is actually spit. So uh, it's a bit gross, but that little bit extra viscosity uh, just seems to work a lot better, but um, I guess I can say that now I don't work there anymore. That's actually the best thing. So anyway, you do that, create one side of the mold, let it dry overnight, come back, squish another one into it, and then put it on two little pieces of card. I just thought that was useful because it allowed me a, an easy way to pull them apart again. And so you've got the left and the right, if you like the A and the B side. So the colour was really just for sort of the clarity of the guide. So then I ended up putting the two halves back together, putting elastic bands around it to hold it together but not crush it, because obviously you don't want the sides to bow inwards. Um, and then I got all prepared for my uh, safety stuff. So um, all I did was really use a little heating dish. Uh, I wore gloves just because essentially if the wax does spit, uh, any water or residual stuff in there, uh, I just meant it wasn't quite so painful. Now, you don't have to use a syringe, you could use a funnel, but I happen to have one to hand, so uh, it worked for me nicely. Or indeed, you can make a little funnel to guide the, the wax into it. But I thought this was just a nice little way of ensuring that it was well topped up. And as you can see, there it is, just coming out nicely. And so that allowed me, even if I was making mistakes, the beauty of working with wax, just have a go again.
Now another thing about working with the hot flame is that it meant I could heat up the tip of the scalpel and actually use that as a way to cut and finish the, uh, the wax mould. And this is pretty classic stuff but was news to me and so this is why it's great to always look around and see who's done a lot of lost wax technique before. So I got my little uh, mini figs out of it and they're all looking pretty good. And as you can see it's both the front and the back relief and there we go. So then this is the bit that you need to take a little bit more care on and so I put the sugru, which is this squishy plasticine type stuff um, as I mentioned and squish that around all the small intricate parts like the hands and then gradually build up the coarser stuff that doesn't need quite as much uh, of a sort of ginger and delicate approach and then just around the head is rather convenient little funnel point and so I just made freestyle little funnel out of it to allow the metal to flow in. So you leave that to dry over overnight, 24 hours if you can, and then I popped it upside down uh, into a little dish, popped it in a, a small oven. Now obviously this is a bit of a fancy lab oven, uh, but it, it could just be your home oven as well, that'll work fine. And essentially all that happens is the wax melts and comes out of it. And what you're left is a very crisp but internal mold cavity mold uh, for the for the metal to flow into. Now if the mold was actually bi bigger you might need a little what's called a riser uh, which is to allow the metal to shoot out of another side but this is such a tiny mold you really don't need it. Um, it, it basically all that will happen is the gas will just naturally escape but good thing to look up if you're getting little pockets in the mold. So casting in pewter as I said uh, low temperature metal but still really quite hard and certainly good enough for any sort of basic jewellery or pendants or anything like that or indeed a little desk weight and so I just heated it up in this little skillet as you can see it melts quite quickly under a, under a blue flame and then basically skimmed off of a paper clip any of the sort of I guess this is like almost like slag um, and got rid of that so that it's nice clean looking metal poured it in quite quickly all in one go and so that it became brimful. And you'll actually notice that it looks brimful and then it actually starts to shrink as most castings do. And so then I was able to cut down the side and pop out the little mini fig. And even though there's some little traces of uh, Sugru that came away with it, I was actually able to get two or three molds quite happily out of this without it really being noticeable. And, and indeed I'd say if you weren't too fussed about something or it wasn't very fiddly, I reckon you could get five molds out of it quite happily. So cleaning up, uh, toothbrushes, dremels to chop off the top, or proxon in my case, um, and as you can see files to basically just bring out some of the detail. As you can imagine some of it does just get a little bit lost. Um, so once it's nice and clean you're all good. And so that's the final thing. And so I think this is just one of those really nice projects where you wouldn't usually think you can access something like a a metal casting for basically what must be under, let's say, uh, no more than really $30, $25, pounds, that sort of thing from the materials. And if you happen to have some of the tools, uh, like a sort of the hot torch, that will make it even better. So I hope this is useful and I hope the guide uh, works scrolling and allows you to get a taste of it. Jump into the full link and get all the details of where you can do this. And please do leave any comments either here or Instructables um, if you liked it. Thanks very much. Bye.